Hello and in today's Pick Micro Controller Assembly we are going to be using the serial UART. Let's first have a look at the schematic. Now on the schematic we have an FTDI USB to serial connected that is indicated by these three pins over here. The RX of the Pick microcontroller is connected to the TX of the FTDI and then the TX of the PIC microcontroller is connected to the RX of the FTDI. And then I have again 8 LEDs connected on the B port with a switch on RD2. We are only going to be using the LEDs and the RX and TX pins. Now let's have a look at the data sheet. Now in section 10 we have the addressable universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter or use art but most of the time you just can call it UART. Now the UART module is one of the two serial I.O. modules. UART is also known as the Serial Communication Interface or SCI. SCI is a very old term. I haven't seen it in recent years. The UART can be configured as full duplex asynchronous system that can communicate with peripherals devices such as CRT terminals and a personal computer. We are going to be communicating with a personal computer. I don't know. I haven't seen a CRT terminal in years. Or it can be configured as half duplex synchronous system. We are going to be configuring for full duplex asynchronous. And full duplex means it can send and receive simultaneously. Half duplex means it can only send or receive on a single communication line. Full duplex has two wires. Half duplex means one wire in most cases. A system that can communicate with peripheral devices such as AD or DA integrator circuits or serial EEPROMs. This is mostly covered by I2C and SPI with more modern microcontrollers. Then they give you the bit S pen, the serial peripheral enable and the three C bits 7 and 6 have to be set in order to configure the pins RC6 and RC7 as universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitters. The UART also has a 9 bit mode. We are only going to be using 8 bit mode. Now the first register we have is the transmitter status register. It's also a control register and it's located at 98 hex. So this will be in bank 1. And we can see the default bits up here. So 0, 0, 0, 0, unimplemented and reads as 0. 0, read by default is 1, read write and by default it is 0. Okay, so we got bit 7, the SCR, clock source select bit. We are running in asynchronous mode, do not care about this. Bit 6 is the TX9, so the 9-bit transmit enable bit. We are going to be using it in 8-bit mode, so this is going to be 0. So it matches up with the 0 there, so we don't need to set it in the assembler. We have the TXN, which enables the transmit. Because we want full duplex mode, we need to enable this. So it is by default 0, so we are going to need to set it in the code. Then we have bit 4, which is the synchronous mode we want it as zero to be an asynchronous mode and then bit four we see sync is by default zero so we don't need to change that in the code and then we have the high board rate select bit we are going to be using the low speed mode so that is zero also zero up here by default and then we have the transmit which is a read only bit and we are going to use this to poll when the transmit is done and then we have the 9 bit of the transfer can be a parity bit we are not going to be using this so we are going to be ignoring bit 0 then we have the receive status and control register so we have bit 7 which is the S pen bit so the serial port enable bit we have to set this one to enable the serial port so it's going to be 1 by default in the register it is 0 we have bit 6 which is another RS9 bit. We are going to be using 8 bit mode. So this bit can be left alone because it is 0 by default. We have the SRN which is the single receive enable bit. In asynchronous mode we do not care so we don't need to touch this bit. And then we have the CREN bit which is the continuous receive enable bit. We are going to be enabling this one. So this enables the receive. So we need to change that bit from 0 to 1 in the code. Then we have the address detect enable bit. We are not going to be using this. This is more when you're using RS485 control. 
and then we have three read-only bits that detect if there was an error on the line. Now we are not going to be using these three bits, but they're good to have a look at if you have trouble sending and receiving on the UART. But these days the technology has improved so that these errors are extremely rare and very special cases. Then in 10.1 we have the board rate generator. Now this determines what board you're going to be running at. And this is controlled by the SBGR register. Now we can see the formula here when the board rate generator is set in low speed in asynchronous mode. This will be your formula for calculating the board rate. And in synchronous mode this will be your formula. And then in high speed mode this is your formula to calculate it out. Now I recommend when you're using assembler you have this as a fixed board rate and not have the code calculated out. It just simplifies the code since we do not have a division instruction available to us. And then we have the relevant registers. So the transmit status register, the receive status register, and then the board rate generator register. Now note this has an SP in front of it. So serial peripheral board rate generator. And the data sheet just says BRG. And then we have our cheat sheet for low speed mode, which is BGRH equal to zero. We can set the serial board rate to 9600 with an error of of 0.16% and then we can feed in the decimal value of 25 into the board rate register. And then we have the UART asynchronous transmitter section in 10.2.1. The UART transmitter block diagram is shown in the figure. The heart of the transmitter is the transmit serial shift register, so TSR. You cannot directly access TSR. You have to access it through the TX reg register. As soon as you write something to the TX reg register, it loads it into the TSR register and then it sends it out on the TX pin of the PIC microcontroller. Then we have a block diagram of the transmitter. So now you can see here for an interrupt to generate, you can have TXIE and TXIF to generate your interrupt. And the rest is basically described up here. You can see here when you load the TX reg, then it automatically gets put into the TSR register, which we cannot directly access. Then we have the UART asynchronous receive. The only part we really care about here is the block diagram. You can see in the block diagram there is an RSR register. So received shift register takes in the data from the RX pin. And then when it is full it pushes the data out onto the RC reg. So the receive register. So you read the receive register to get the data from the UART when it is done receiving. And then when it is done receiving, it can generate an interrupt for the RC IF. So you need to enable the RCIE bit. Then we have a full table of the relevant registers. We need to enable the peripheral interrupt enable to get an interrupt from the UART. We are only going to be using a interrupt on the receive. Then we have the RC status register, which has all the relevant registers highlighted for us. Now let's get to the code. Okay, so I have a basic code here. Our reset vector just jumps to setup. I have cleared out the interrupts from the previous tutorial, so we just have a ratifier. here. And then we clear Tris B to set the whole port as output. Tris D as an input. We go to bank zero. We clear port B so that all the LEDs are off. And then we have a move literal to working for bit seven that gets ORed with INCON. And then we clear the carry bit on the status register. Okay, now for the UART, I'm going to create a new label underneath main, and we are going to call that UART underscore init, and we create that label, just paste here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the bank selects from setup, so we now have both banks selected. Okay, now we need to check which register TX status is in. Now I've opened the second PDF here so we can quickly flip between it and TX stat is in bank 1. So the only bit we need to change in the TX stat register is bit 5. So we say ESF, so bit set flag. We take our TX STA and we set bit 5. And then we have a look at where our RC status register is. 
and we can see that is in bank zero we go to the bank zero section click back to the register and we need to set two bits in this register which is the serial port enable and then the CREN enable so bit seven and four so we do a move literal to working and we say one shifted in by seven or with one shifted in by four and that will enable the receive on the uart and then we have the sbgr register for the serial board rate generator register and we check in the memory map again where that is located so this is located in bank one so we say move literal to working uh, then we check what the value should be in our cheat sheet that should be 25 for a board rate of 9600 bits per second and we say move working to file the sbgr register the serial peripheral board rate generator register so we move 25 into there so our board rate is now set and i actually forgot here we need to inclusive or working with file of rc sta and then we return final thing will be we have to configure the 3c register as inputs that will be before we set any of the bits and all the trust registers set in bank one so we say move literal to working one shifted by seven and that's ord with one shifted by six and then we have move literal to working trust c so that will be our basic setup so now what we can do is in our setup code we just say call uart init to initialize the uart and then we need to do a transmit transmit is done via txreg so as soon as you load something into txreg it will output on the uart move literal to working and we want to move in the character a so the capital letter a we are moving into the txreg and this is how you denote string characters in pick.as assembly then after we've loaded that in we need to move working to file and that's going to be our tx reg now what we need to do is we need to check when the buffer is empty so by default it will be empty as soon as you load it in it will be zero so we create a new label we say that is ur underscore tx underscore done and we do a bit test now i need to remember the instruction for that create a new window okay then the instruction we are going to use this is a bit test skip if clear and the register will be tx status bit one and then we just use an unconditional branch go to tx done and then if it skips return this will now check when the tx register is done sending and then back to our main label we just say call tx done subroutine and it will wait for the you are to be done sending okay now we can program the pick and then in the top corner you can see a going there's unfortunately not much to see on the board itself uh, aside from the trans the receive led on my ftdi uh, going absolutely nuts so you can implement a delay for this but for this purpose we know already we are sending capital a over the uart so we know the transmitter is working mm, i seem to have made a mistake we need to add uart underscore ex underscore pole because the tx stat register is located in bank one so we need to do a bank one select before we enter and then after we return we need to unselect bank one so that we know we are in bank zero so i'm just going to reprogram the pick with the additions and now we can see a again in the top left corner going again i'm just going to stop that again we are going to implement the your receive using a interrupt now we have set up already everything we need for the receiving end the only thing we need to enable now is the interrupt itself just a minor change now that i look at the code we want to or to see 
instead of moving the entire literal to working so that we only change the bits that we need to change. Back to receiving the UART, we go to the interrupt section which is located in the memory organization. Then in the incon register we can see bit 6 is the peripheral interrupt enabled. Since the UART is a peripheral we need to enable the peripheral interrupt. So we can take a move literal to working we actually copy the code and then we just move in to bit 6. We can technically do it over here, but this keeps the code self-contained even though it technically wastes memory. Okay, then we have the PIE1 register, which is the peripheral interrupt enable. We can see RCIE, which is the UART sieve interrupt enable, and the TX interrupt enable. The only one we care about at the moment is the RCIE, which is the UART sieve interrupt enable. So PIE is located in bank 1. So we go to our bank 1 and your interrupt enables will be the last thing you want to do. So we take move literal to working and it is bit 5. So we only want to set bit 5 and then we inclusive or PIE 1 with the working registers. Actually, you know what? We don't need to do this. We just need to do a bit set flag and that is going to be bit 5. So the peripheral interrupt is enabled and then we have the PIR1 register which contains the flag and the flag is going to be RCIF which is the UART receive interrupt flag. Okay then we go to our interrupt service routine and before rectify we want to do a bit test skip if clear and now since this is in bank 0 we don't need to specifically set the bank. We take like our PIR1 register and we test bit 5 and if bit 5 is set we say call UART underscore RX ISR create the label there and then in our interrupt service routine we have to clear the flag so PCF PIR1 so we clear our flag so that is done and then we need to create a variable which we are going to call RX underscore temp that's going to be equals to 0x73. I'm going to change this to number 4. We are going to create another variable that is going to be called test underscore flag is equals to 0x73. That is going to be a custom register. And now in the your RX ISR, we are going to be extracting whatever is in the receive register. So we are going to be using a new instruction, which is going to be move file to destination. Now they don't have a extended version of this, but move file to destination zero will move it to the working register. So we use MOV file. And the file that we want to move is the RC register, which is the receive register, and that's going to be to destination zero. So this will move RC reg into the working register. Now, since we are modifying the working register, we need to do a context save. So we have to create another variable up here, which is going to be w underscore temp, and that's going to be eq to 0x75. And this is going to be our temporary working register. So this is very simple. So we say move working to file, and our file is going to be the working register. And then just before we exit the interrupt, we are going to say move file working temporary register to zero, which is going to move the temporary working register back into the original working register. So this saves the working register and then we just restore the working register to whatever it was before. I'm going to do an example of this. Say we have an interrupt for some or other reason. We have an interrupt trigger on this line of code and when the interrupt triggers it will push this address onto the stack. We modify the working register over here and then whatever was in CREG gets pushed into incon register or or with the incon register completely messing up your code. So that covers the context save. Then what we can do in our interrupt service routine. Now we have extracted what we have received. Now we can move the working register. So MOV working to file. And then we can save the 
are a temporary register. So we are technically triple buffering this value. So first it goes into the shift register, then it goes into the receive register, and then we save it in the Rx temp register for wherever we want to use it. And uh, now we are going to use this test flag, and our test flag is going to be bit zero Rx underscore done. But this is more for when you are using buffers. So this is preluding to using buffers in the Rx register. So we take our test flag, we use it under here, we say bit set flag and we are going to set flag zero. So the zeroth bit is going to be a one when we have received something from the UART. And then we clear our flag and then we can simply return and that is going to be our UART receive. And now in our main section of the code, we are going to do a bit test flag, skip if clear, and that is going to be our test flag and we are going to test for bit zero. And then we call and we create a new label underneath the TX done and we are going to call this UART underscore echo. So what we are going to do is we are going to send characters from the desktop to the PIC microcontroller and then we are going to send that data that we have received back to the PIC microcontroller. Hence the echo because what you put in is what you're going to get back. So this also confirms that your board rate is set correctly, your wiring is done correctly. So in echo we are going to do a bit clear flag and we are going to clear the test flag. So the test flag is now zero Then we are going to do a move file and we want to move our rx temporary file or register to the working register and then we want to move the working register to a file which is going to be our tx transmit register so tx reg and then we poll for a done so we effectively just call this call and then we say return but we are not really going to see anything of interest on the pack itself so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to move the working to another file and the other file is going to be trus b so now we have a way of seeing the physical bits that go in from the computer to the uart so let's quickly give that a build program the pick Right, let's see if this works. And there we go. Uh, whatever I type on my keyboard gets echoed back to my computer. So it goes from my computer to the pick back to my computer. So if I press A, we get an A. A capital A, we get a capital A. Okay, so now we can see the LEDs going. Any random whatever characters. And then also you can see on my FTDI USB to serial, you can see ever so slightly, trying to get them into, you can see them going barely, but you can see the send and receive going. Okay, and that's a basic introduction to using the serial UART in Assembler on a PIC microcontroller. A like, share, comment and subscribe will always be appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.